I can't even I like I have so many questions about it just doing that all in one day how did you sort of go home at night and just go oh. it was the most confronting difficult experience I've mm -hmm. ever had doing this job why is doing that? that play well it's that play it's the play that Tony wrote mm -hmm. it's you know, I get chills now. Looking mm -hmm. like this, just even thinking about the experience of playing that character, um, because I didn't. I've never had an experience like Joe Pitts. You know, I mm. don't have the the mother he had. I didn't grow up in the religion that he grew up in, and um, or the time that he grew up in. Mm -hmm. You know, and to kind of walk in his shoes mm. was just hard hard mm. you know it was it was hard to do that in front of an audience and when i would start that first scene with nathan where he's mm. on the phone and stuff it's like i mean it's such a incredible i mean if I, if you would have told me when i was in high school that i would be on stage on broadway with nathan lane i would be like you've got to be kidding me um but i would get to you know get to start that you know that big marathon with him you know every every day but then you know you do the first four hour play go away for dinner and then come back and i would mm. end the play you know kissing his ghost and right. you just felt like God, we've been through war together. And it's not just us, the actors on stage, but everyone in that audience, right. too. Right. Because every show is different. Every show, you know, hmm. turns in a different way. Um, the audience acts different. You know, you're different. The other hmm. actors are different. Um, it was hard, but I learned about life in a way that I've, you know. But that's, you know, a great piece of writing, like, like Tony wrote, I mean, there's just, I've been thinking about that play since high school. So to really? Get to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. to get the chance to, 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 to play that character in it was, I did not know how hard it was going to be, I tell you that. How important is it as a queer man to tell those stories? I mean, it's personally, I feel like I learned about myself in ways that I didn't, mm -hmm. like you just don't, ex you don't get the, you know, you get, you walk in your own shoes in life, right. you know, and I've always felt very um, safe, mm -hmm. you know, I've was in the drama department in high school, I went to Juilliard, it's like, to be queer, I mean, and, and you know, it's like, I've been playing queer characters my my first movie I played a trans right. character so it's like I've just never I've never felt the danger of that do you know mm -hmm. so to, 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 to walk in the, the shoes of someone who the danger is so real that he can't utter it 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 taught me something about myself and about that about my community mm -hmm. you know that it's like we're not all so lucky to be no. To get the free pass in life, we're not. No. You know? And now, you know, now politics. There are politicians who are using us as a scapegoat. Yeah, are using us as you know a political division. Yeah, and also as a community, we can be very unkind to each other. I mm -hmm. feel like you know, it's a very judgmental and kind of look at someone and be like, well, you you know, you ought to have done it like this and stuff. And right. that's just not, you know. <laughs> there's there's um, there's a more gentle way to be. Mm. You know, and I, and I, and I guess when I, before I'd played Joe, I could look at that character on the page and think, you know, you know, what a coward and stuff. But I, but after playing him, I don't see a coward. He had a journey. He had a journey. Mm. I see someone who did something that was very, very hard to do and something that, the, that, that most queer people do. Right. You know, have to figure out how to shed their skin. Right. And in a different time and also a different time. I yeah. mean, just a completely different time. Um, you know, it's the beginning of the epidemic. Yeah. What gay man was going to run around and say, look, I'm gay. It was very few and far between. Oh, I, I tell you, I got chills again just thinking about it. It's like that, it's that, that play was like a lesson in life, mm. you know. It was so beautifully done. 
Yeah, it was a privilege, privilege to be a part of it. So what do you want to do next? Do you want to work with your neighbor, Jessica Lang, oh reading god. that interview? I would oh my god. to work with Jessica. <laughs> oh my god, I would love, love, Did love you ever think you'd be with neighbors that? with Jessica Lang? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, talk about one of the most inspiring, coolest people hmm. I've ever you know, the, the chance to meet. I mean, she was so good to me when I was building that house across the, the field. <laughs> <laughs> I love she must story. have thought I was insane. Well, I love this story you told about the coyote coming up to your tent. Yeah. <laughs> oh my my husband and I, we lived in Sherman Oaks. Okay, not uh -huh. the country, but to me, a city boy, that's the country. And I, this comes back to Twilight, actually. So <laughs> I'm in our kitchen. And my, you have two dogs and they're going nuts. And I look outside and there are coyotes, but I don't know what coyotes are. I thought they were wolves. So I yeah. call my husband. I'm like, Oh my God, it's the wolves from Twilight. And he's like, Mark, they're coyotes. <laughs> yeah, no, coyotes are very clever. I see them a lot now. Um, yeah, I always think it's kind of a lucky thing to see. There was one time I, I don't know if this was in the story. I know I told the story when I was doing the, when I was talking to Jessica. I went to the, the farm one time in the middle of winter mm -hmm. and, um, and on one of the ponds, there was just this huge bloody mess. This doe had. Yeah, you tell me, keep going, yeah, yeah. but tell me. Tell oh, me. yeah, tell no, me, no, me. it did, no, it did, it, I guess just the coyotes had chased it out onto the ice and. Mm. She slipped and fell, and they just tore to pieces. Yeah, we had two little out. white dogs. We were like, one of the reasons we moved to the valley was to have a backyard to let the dogs out. Mm, and yeah. as soon as we took, there were people on our street who were walking their dogs with tasers, billy clubs. Really? <laughs> yes, because the coyotes, they're fearless now. Yeah, well, they will be. And they'll also, they'll do this thing where they'll send a bitch in heat out mm. to the houses to kind of yip and call dogs wow. to come to come out to the... To come, come out, oh, come wow. be with us. We're having so much fun out here in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> what is next for you? What should go, we look forward to? Go. More stage, TV, movies? What do you want to do? I don't know. I'm kind of um, more Ronin. Looking for something um, interesting to do. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of where my head is right now. How often are you reading scripts? All the time. I mean, I'm looking hard. I'm um, to do something. You like TV? I do. I think it's. I think it's. I. I don't. I like. The opportunity to get to tell a story over a long, a long chunk of time, and there's so many more options now. I mean, yeah, streamers. It's every day I'm getting a tip sheet or a press release about a show, and it's like it's in its third season. I'm like, I didn't even hear of this thing. I and it's know in its third it. Season. I know it. And they're so interesting. Are you watching Euphoria? Yes. Isn't it phenomenal? Yes. It's intense. It's intense, but I'm watching this and I'm just thinking, not only is it gorgeous and the music is incredible and every single one of those performances is just pitch perfect. Um, me and Matt saw Maddie um, at a restaurant in Venice yes, yesterday. So Matt, wait, Maddie. Oh yeah, okay. no, Matt's my boyfriend. Okay, we saw Maddie, the actress who plays Maddie oh, got it. at a okay. restaurant. And Ma Maddie's one of my favorite characters on the show. Oh, right. So I, did you did you fanboy? What do you do? I was too nervous to. I'm too shy. I'm too shy. But I definitely was like, there she is. <laughs> I think that show is so so good. What else are you watching? Uh, when they see us, I thought was fantastic. But yeah. the um, Chernobyl. I thought was I haven't watched exquisite. it yet and everyone says just really intense like you got to be in a certain mood yeah I, yeah, I, yeah. yeah I hear that yeah I hear that but it, it's so stylish yeah. it's so incredibly stylish and so smart I mean it it's about a science that I know nothing about and I love that kind of thing so mm -hmm. to hear it explained in a dramatic way I was like this is fascinating this is fascinating and it shows a kind of level of hero heroism mm -hmm. that is not glorified. Just the way people were dealing with that right. disaster. It just told all of these small stories of individuals rising to the occasion. You know, when there was shit going down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lee Pace, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank this you. was awesome. I this was great. Yeah, I appreciate it. That was Lee Pace. Thanks for listening to The Big Ticket. I'm your host, Mark Malkin. Coming up next week, Milo Ventimiglia, the Emmy-nominated star of This Is Us, stops by to talk about his new movie, The Art of Racing in the Rain, and so much more. 
In the meantime, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mark Malkin. See you next week.